Now let's take a look at the edit page in detail. Click on the edit page button or one of the mixer channel names to open the page. At the top of this section is the sampler. Here is where the raw sound can be shaped as needed. Select the kit piece to edit by clicking on its name button. Note that this only changes the kit piece in the sampler section though, not the lowest section. Use the mixer buttons to do that. Click on the MIDI graphic to the left to select by MIDI. Now you can just play the kit piece on your keyboard and it will auto select here. The graphic is a copy of the graphic on the kit page with the same controls except the set buttons isn't included on the toms. To the left and right of this are the pan and volume controls for the overheads and room mics respectively. Use these in combination with the close fader on the kit piece to achieve the sound you are looking for. Reset a control by holding down the control key and left clicking. The single sample button forces the kit piece to play a single sample rather than the multi velocity samples. This can be quite helpful when mimicking older drum machines. To the right of the kit piece controls are the envelope and filter sections. This whole filter section can be turned on and off with the button above the section name. Each filter also has its own on off button above it. The pitch section can be used to fine tune a drum or create some unique sounds using the envelope. The main knob affects the pitch of the whole kit piece while the overhead room knob offsets those two mics. All of them are incremented in semitone step. The pitch envelope can be used to adjust pitch over time. Either click drag the envelope in the graph display or use the parameter displays to edit the settings. Start is the pitch of the original drum strike. Hold is how long that pitch is held for before it starts the release phase. The release controls the amount of time it takes for the pitch to return to its normal default level. The velocity sensitive parameter links the pitch envelope to velocity. The higher this is set, the less effect of the pitch envelope has on lower velocity hits. The volume envelope affects the volume level over time. Parameters are attack, that's how quickly the envelope is applied to the initial set level. Decay, that's the time it takes to get to the sustain level after the initial attack. And hold is the length of time the sustain level is held for before it starts to fall to silence. How long that takes is controlled by the release parameter. The filter section consists of a high and low pass filter that can be used to remove low or high frequencies or both. Click drag to adjust the filter levels or the whole highlighted area. Using these envelopes and filter, the original sounds can be shaped even further. If you'd like to copy these settings to other drums, there are copy and paste buttons toward the far left. Click on C to copy and P to paste. Now let's take a look at the lower section of this page. In the lower left corner is another drum graphic. If the kick, snare or room mics are selected, there are controls for adjusting mic position that are slightly different depending on which one is chosen. The snare also has a buzz level. This simulates the buzz of the snare springs when the kick and toms are played just like in a real kit. It doesn't affect the sound of the snare itself when it's played. The remainder of this page we saw briefly when we looked at the insert switch in the mixer section. This is where we can adjust any processor we want to use on the channel. There's a compressor, distortion unit, 3 band EQ and saturating limiter on all channels. In addition, the bus and master channels also have a tape saturator as well as high and low pass filters. The insert section can be turned off using the switch at the top left corner. In addition, there is a MIDI to select button. When lit, play your keyboard to auto to select the play kit piece. There are also copy and paste buttons beneath this to copy and paste settings with. Each processor also has its own on off control. 
Use these to further shape the chosen kit piece, or as mentioned earlier, use them on the bus send to set up some parallel processing. At the far right are the output control, which controls the level of the processed signal. Note that changing this does not affect the unprocessed signal, which means this can be used to add as much processed signal as necessary to achieve the sound you want. Beneath the output control area are two effects send level controls. Use these to control the amount of signal sent to the effects page that we'll look at shortly. The effects on off switch is linked to the effects switch in the mixer section and changes made in one are reflected in the other. Click on the effects button to switch to that page. Just above the mixer controls are two sliders to control levels to their relevant effects. There's also an on off switch which is linked to the one in the mixer. Above those are the two independent identical effect strips consisting of a reverb, followed by an EQ and an output section. Each reverb has its own on off switch at the top left corner. There are four reverb types selected using the arrow buttons beneath the display. Choose from Ambience, Room, All and Plate. To the right of that is the reverb parameter display for pre-delay, time and damping. Parameters are displayed numerically at the bottom and graphically in the plot display and can be adjusted in either. Click and drag up or down or use the mouse wheel over the numeric display. In the graphic display, click drag left or right to adjust pre-delay up and down to adjust time, while the mouse wheel adjusts the high frequency damping setting. Maximum time values will depend on the reverb type chosen. The EQs are both two band peak filter types. They also have their own on off switch, numeric parameter and graphic plot displays. Adjust using either the numeric or plot display in a similar way to the reverb. In the plot display, the mouse wheel adjusts Q. The output section controls the output level and pan of the reverb. These do not affect the dry output. Use the pan control to not only control the pan position of the reverb, but also its width by click dragging up and down. The pre and post switch controls where in the routing change the reverb signal is added. Either pre-master inserts, which means that the reverb signal will be further processed by the master processors on its inserts, or post, leaving the reverb signal unprocessed by the master bus. And now let's move on to the Beats page. The Beats page is where we can select and manage the library of beats that are included with addictive drums. The interface consists of several sections. On the left is the browser and search section, and on the right is the beats edit and manage area. Let's look at the browse and filter area first. In the main window, we can see all the various names of the beats. To the left of the name is an icon that indicates whether the file is a beat, indicated by a B, or a fill, indicated with an F. If the library entry is a group of associated beats and fills, there is an arrow next to it. Click on this to show all the various beats. The library can be sorted by clicking on the column you wish to sort on. Note that the entry called Startup is a special case and is always at the top regardless of how the list is ordered. You can change the Startup file to one of your choice. Just locate the file you wish to use and rename it Startup.mid. To filter the files, use the various filters just above the list. Select a beat by clicking on it in the browser. Once selected, it can be played back by clicking on the play icon, either in the beat player to the right, or the play icon next to the page button. Next to the player are a couple of buttons, one labelled Sync and one Tempo. When Sync is highlighted, Addictive drums will start to play when Sonar playback is started. When tempo is lit, the selected beat is played back at the current tempo of Sonar, not the native tempo of the beat. You can drag beats to the favourites area for easy access to them. 
Beats can also be dragged from the browser or favourites list into the required track and position in Sonar. The edit page at the bottom is used to make temporary changes to the current file, such as length and speed. Although changes made here aren't made to the source file, they are reflected when you drag the file into Sonar. For example, if you change a 4 bar beat to 16 bars, it will become a 16 bar clip when dragged into Sonar. Beneath the edit window are a button to choose map presets and another to open the map editor. Click on the map window button to open it. A map is simply a method of telling addictive drums which kick piece to play when a particular MIDI note is played. There's access to the map presets from this window too. To change or create a mapping, first click on the drum piece you want to map. This will load that kick piece's stroke type into the list. Click on the name in the list to hear a preview of the drum, as long as the Auto Preview box is checked. Toward the top is an edit area similar to that found in the edit window. Next to it is a velocity window, where the velocity can be edited or a preset chosen from the velocity curves drop down. To assign a drum piece to a note number, just click drag it from the list across to the relevant key. Once you've finished editing or creating, save it as a preset using the Save As option from the drop down list. Click on OK, return to the main program window. And that's Addictive Drums, a very powerful, easy to use drum synth included with Sonar X3 Producer.